I use my sewing machines a lot. I had such good luck with my first enrollment machine, the 4120, I decided to get another one when I needed another machine for my shop. Janome makes a lot of good machines, so picking out my new one wasn't as easy as I thought. But then I saw the 6300 machine. The main control panel is very simple, but it does everything we need. It takes a whole five minutes of reading the manual to get the hang of all these buttons. I use that C button more than anything else because it returns you to the standard straight stitch. After you've used whatever specialty stitch you needed, push the C button and right back to where you started and the stitch that we use for just about everything. And they have the 66 stitches broken down into four categories. Of course, we need a way to find out what all those numbers mean. And it's right there. I like how this card disappears and is out of the way when you don't need it, but you can just flip it up when you do need it. And if you need a refresher on the thread pass, they've got that on the back of the card. Winding buttons is done independently of the needle mechanism. Thread path for winding bobbins is easy and illustrated on top of the machine. Thread the bobbin itself and set it on the post then move the stop to the bobbin. Press the B button and the bobbin starts. I press the B again to stop it to trim off the tail, then press the B again, and that starts the bobbin going and let it go to completion. The mechanism for the needle isn't involved in this at all. There's a separate motor for winding bobbins, and it's a lot faster, and you don't have to remove the thread from the needle path. You actually get to sit back and just watch it fill up. With this system, it seems like I can wind two bobbins in the time it took to wind one. There's a smaller control panel on the left side of the machine with the sliding speed control, automatic cutter, the up and down position button, tie off thread, and the reverse button. There's nothing complicated here either. Everything just works well. I love being able to tell the machine to leave the needle down when I stop sewing. This way I can turn the fabric without having to worry about moving it off of that last stitch. I've also come to appreciate having manually adjusted pressure foot pressure and manual thread tensioning. These things never work for me on the cheaper machines, but do every time on the Genomi 6300. You turn the dials and you get logical results. Something else I like is having these twin spool holders on the back of the machine. The posts fit a standard size spool of thread, but they come with these adapters that you can put on and they fit the big cones of thread like I use all the time. For years I used a separate holder for the big cones of thread, but this is way easier. The arm that holds the thread up folds down when you want to move the machine and folds right back up when you get ready to use it again. This slotted dial on the front lets you adjust the length of decorative stitches so they look right. This is the socket for the presser foot and the arm, and this slider lets you disengage the feed dogs if you want to. I didn't think that I'd like using this knee arm for raising the presser foot, but I decided to give it a try, and I'm glad I did. I thought this would be really distracting, but it turns out it's really easy to use. It not only lets you raise the presser foot without having to let go of the fabric, but it raises it all the way. That's especially good when you need to hold it all the way up so you can get thick fabric underneath it. It just works better with two hands. And there's all kinds of guides cut into the needle plate. And it has the drop-in bobbin. Just why anybody would produce a machine these days without a lay-down bobbin is beyond me. The other pretty much standard feature these days is a needle threader, and that works well. Another surprise to me was this rather large work table extension that comes with the machine. And it comes with six of these adjustable legs so you can get it dialed in to match your surface of your machine. But there is a problem with this, for me anyway. The space under this work table is great for storing scissors and other things you need to keep close at hand. But it's very clear, and sometimes while I'm sewing, I forget that it's there. And when I go to grab a scissors, whatever's under there, right then I'm kind of glad that I work alone. My bad. Another surprise is finding out that we get a nice selection of accessories that we actually use. And it even comes in a little plastic box that fits all of that and a little bit more. This makes a lot of sense. Those stupid little bays that are built into the side of some of the machines doesn't. If you're looking for a sort of high-end machine that you don't need an engineering degree to operate, you need to look at the Genomi 6300. I use my 6300 a lot, and in a couple of months that I've had it so far, it hasn't done anything to disappoint me. It's smooth running, easy to use, has all the power that I'd ever need. And once I get used to that clear work table, everything's going to be fine. 